Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome, it's lovely to have you. My name is Megan and I put content out every Wednesday and Fridays. If you want to be a part of this lovely YouTube journey that I'm going on, then please don't forget to like and subscribe and to share if you want and to leave a comment down below on what content you would like to see. So recently I got asked by one of my subscribers to do a follow up on my first ever YouTube video, which was the Open University one, which I'll link above and also in the description if you would like to go and watch that. Apologies for the quality, it was my first ever YouTube video and it's it's shocking <laughs> your girl was still learning it's gotten better since then <laughs> I promise this is going to be a video providing advice for people who are starting open university or are considering starting open university some of these are going to be generic and apply to all universities but I didn't just want to sit here and blab at you blab at you I decided to do some makeup while I actually give the advice so this is makeup and advice advice number one try and time manage as much as you can if you are doing it on your own there's no one that's going to pull you up on your deadlines taking too many breaks no one's going to be there for you except for yourself and you will fall behind if you decide oh I'm going to take maybe a week just to relax and I, that's with every university that's not just with OU that's with every university the great about OU is once you've submitted an assignment you can actually see all of your next assignments so you can sort of plan on how you're going to go about doing things I mean OU provide like a schedule that you can go along with and it'll say something like week one study 101 of novels and beyond blah 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 blah, blah. I did not follow the OU schedule I like to do things in my own time what I used to do is once one assignment was done I used to send it in and start the next lot of reading straight away because I didn't I'm one of those people that didn't like feeling like I was falling behind I just was that type of person I mean the schedule works it just wasn't for me but just make sure you are time managing planning advice number two and this one I am going to preface by saying I have had wonderful teachers at OU I only had one issue with one teacher I felt there was something wrong with the marking so what I'm gonna say is trust your gut if you feel like you are being unfairly graded I highly recommend contacting your student support so I did an English literature and creative writing degree which entailed me to write stories uh, short stories scripts life writing all of that jazz I obviously knew that he was a professor and that he obviously knows what he's doing I knew that he was a published author but I didn't look into it any further my second year we were tasked for our first assignment to write a 2500 word short story which was fun you know I read through all the material I did all the material correctly I wrote my story which happened to be a crime story I thought I'd done a very good job which I did I got a, quite a good grade for it during your studies you, you feel you think if you can try different genres you're supposed to expand your knowledge of these genres and feel comfortable to explore those genres as long as you're sticking to the criteria for my second story I decided to do some sort of fantasy I did all the research and I, I liked the story and I, I made sure that I got other people to read it and to give me advice and to give me suggestions it was decent you know maybe not publisher worthy but it was decent enough for my grade so I sent it in and when it got back I had a really low mark I read through the the feedback it was nothing more than my uh, story structure maybe needed a little bit of tweaking uh, grammar was fine, story was fine, plot needed a bit of tweaking, but the grade shouldn't have been that low. But I thought, you know what, he knows what he's talking about. Um, I took all, on all the feedback, that is a big piece of advice I would say, to take on all the feedback because it's very important. And I decided to do a different story this time and I did a romance because I thought, ah, oh, you know what, let's let's try something different. Maybe fantasy isn't my domain. Romance story, it was like a Tuctorian set in the 1800s, that old 1800s romance. I felt really good about this one because I love romance. I had another author, like an actual published author, read it and she liked it. She gave me some advice for it and this, this should bump my grade back up to where I, I usually am. When I got back, I got even lower. Read the feedback, the feedback was completely fine, my, my plot and structure was a lot better, my characters were a lot, a lot more developed. So yeah, I couldn't understand why this grade was so low and I, I should have emailed. So I decided to go back and do crime again. I sort of figured out maybe it's the, the genre that he isn't liking. And what happens? My grade goes up. So I realised that he was marking me based off his own personal liking of the genre not the criteria and now I wish I had had the guts to go and complain and to speak up about this and get those two stories remarked but I thought what if OU don't take it seriously and what if 
I am stuck with this teacher then hates me even more and then they ruin my marks. So I didn't have the balls to go and complain about it. I would say if you feel like you are being unfairly marked, have the balls and go and complain about it. So that leads me on to advice number three and this sort of goes for every university slash it's just generally a general knowledge. Always have two to three people that can read through your work. You're going to be staring at your work constantly and overlooking it all the time. Eventually you're going to start missing stuff because your eyes start to become blind to a lot of things. Always have a third person or a second person that reads through your stuff just to make sure that you're still on track, your grammar is still good, writing is still clean and clear and so that's just general you know, knowledge. <laughs> for anybody that is in university. So advice number four, if you do not understand something and you're really struggling, email your tutor no matter how many times and always email your tutor way in advance. It takes a long time for the tutors to get back to you. You don't have anybody just on hand. I mean, you can message, message them or give them a call because they do offer their own personal uh, phone numbers on their profiles. But I always felt that was a bit weird and I didn't want to intrude on their personal lives. I just felt emailing was a bit more professional. I mean, I used to bombard my tutors, I really did, because I wanted to make sure I understood the assignment. And thank God that I did. In my third year, I had an assignment where the brief said something about word counts. So we had to write two separate bits of information about summarizing an article. But it said 150 words for the summary and then 300 words for something else. It never said 300 words total. So it needed to be 150 and 150. And I read it as 150 for the summary, the 300 words for the argument and the summary. No. So I emailed my tutor. I had already written everything. I had posted it on the, the group forum because that's where they were going to be marking it. It's just something didn't feel right it, because I was reading other people. Theirs was much shorter than mine. So I emailed my tutor and she was like, it looks like you've basically repeated yourself in the su summary. But it, it she didn't say like, it had to be 300 words total until like the last email. So thank God, because if I had left that, I would have been penalized and lost marks because I was over the 10% limit. So always email your tutor, no matter how many times it takes, and always email your tutor way, way, way in advance before the assignment is due, like a good two weeks to a month in advance. <laughs> they are there to help you, and if they're not being helpful, email your student support and get help. Advice number five. So, oh, you already suggest this on their website and I'm just going to further uh, elaborate on it. Use the student room, utilize it, take as much advantage of it as you can. I didn't. I personally didn't want to talk to anybody while I was studying. That was the whole idea of why I chose to go to an online university so I didn't have to interact with other people, that introvert in me. But I should have taken full advantage of it because you know what, sometimes you have to look part, you have to go through your anxieties and just deal with it and talking to other people on the student forum. Because the forums do help. You will get your own own student forum and then you'll also get like a main forum that is for the whole the English department that you can go on to and talk to students because specifically if you're going to do an, a creative writing degree, you're going to be writing stories and you need some advice or you need other people to read it. Great place to go because a lot of other people are in the same boat and some people are actual published authors. Whether self-published or not, it doesn't matter, but you will get great advice, friendly advice. No one's going to be rude to you on the forums. They're not allowed to be or else they'll be kicked off. Bullying isn't tolerated at OU, which I do really appreciate because it's scary posting your stuff. I did utilize it a lot more in my third year. We sort of had to because we had to be posting our stuff or else we would lose marks. It was just a way for OU to get more people involved in the student forum because a lot of people weren't getting involved. Hi, sorry guys, that was me. But I started taking a lot more advantage of it later on. And also you can find friendships, you can find people who are inspiring you and and that are inspired and you can inspire each other you can get study support you can find a, a buddy and you know and they do suggest having a study buddy if you want to i personally study better on my own so i didn't do that but you know they do recommend it you need to have commitment so difficult to get a first and a 2-1 with open university so difficult for traditional universities it's between you have to get a 70 and above to get a to get a first for open university you have to get a 70 to 84 to get a 2-1 and 85 and above to get a first. And that's why employers take you so seriously because they've seen that you have the commitment, they've seen the type of work that you have to do, the type of self-motivation you have to have to be able to do an online degree because like I said, no one's there to, to really support you other than yourself. So it is a lot harder, the commitment has to be there and if you're not gonna have the commitment then I would suggest not doing it. And also because of the, how the grading works and how much harder it is, bear that in mind if you do decide to go with OU. Found that this out quite recently, 
like I only found out last night to, to get a 2-1 you have to have 70 or more to get a 2-1 advice number seven this is quite dis discouraging but also disheartening because it shows the how rude and mean people can be I had a lot of people question at the Open University and my wanting to go there before I even started and it made me start to question a few things like is this really the right place I want to go should I, should I go to a traditional university don't let other people discourage you from going to Open University do your own research go to Milk and Keynes if you want to if the you know the campus is there go and see the place talk to OU because you know what Tom Dick and Harry might not have the, the right information the right advice if they've gone to a more traditional university they're obviously going to have um, discouraging opinions about an online university. I had one particular person who said to me how you know employers might not take you seriously. He's heard that employers don't take people seriously if they go to OU. That is total BS. There are I am on the alumni group on OU in, on LinkedIn, and the positions that some of my alumni, uh, you know, people, um, they're in amazing positions: managers, CEOs. Um, self-employed business owners they are doing so well and you want to tell me that employers don't see open university as legitimate and you know I had one person say to me oh why do you want to go to open university you know it's not a real university I had act I had people say that to me and they questioned the research that I had done I wouldn't have chosen to go to open university if I hadn't done my own research talked to OU um, spoken to people that had gone to OU meh and then I also had someone say, like, I'd finished my first year and I hadn't studied in a long time. I was doing more, I was doing other stuff uh, for the past six years and I never thought I'd go to university. So, of course, I may struggled in my first year picking it up. My grades were still good. I was getting there. But I had someone say to me, oh, why don't you go to a normal university next year for your second and third year? And I, I did think about it. I, I, I thought about it and I thought, well, maybe I could just do that. Maybe I could just transfer my grades over but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to stay at home and study. I didn't want to have to get up, go and pay for parking. Do I didn't want to do that. Just because it's not something that someone else wants doesn't mean they should be discouraging you from your own choices and what's best for you. This is more for people who are looking into wanting to go to Open University. If you are scrolling through all the courses and you happen to find three or more that sort of link to each other or overlap one another so you've got some of the modules that are the same as um this one this other course that you're not too sure about which one you should do because you're not sure which um, one is going to be best tailored to you call open university see they are the most helpful people i've ever spoken to i mean obviously you get one or two that are a bit meh but the vast majority that i did speak to are wonderful i spoke to one guy who was absolutely phenomenal he didn't just help me with picking my course signing me up on my course but also um helping me figure out how to get my student loan Advice number, what are we on? Nine? Nine. Now this is more tailored to my degree, specifically the literature book side of things. Other degrees, um, I guess this could, you know, go towards other degrees depending on what it is. For me, the literature side of my degree, so you get your course materials provided for you, but then on top of it, they give us a list of books that they would want us to buy and they would give links to Amazon and they were quite expensive. So, for instance, a lot of my Grimm brothers' books, because I had to buy a lot of fairy tale books, I had to buy a lot of uh, literary, literary books like um, Bleak House and, uh, you know, Charles Dickens, Angela Carter. So what I did is I did buy some of them on Amazon because I couldn't find them on, I couldn't find them anywhere else. I also found lots on eBay. Look around before you start purchasing from Amazon. I know it's easier because then, you know, you get your book straight away. But for, what I did is I went to charity stores, I went to antique stores which is where I happen to find I have so many more than just this but I happen to find the complete works of the Grimm brothers I've also got the Hans Christian Andersen books as well because we had to do fairy tales which I absolutely loved love doing fairy tales and then I also got Charles Dickens Bleak House oh, it's absolutely stunning I've even got the the drawings on the front of all the different characters I highly recommend if you if you need to buy books, it, go to all the, the antique stores, the charity stores, because most likely you will find hopefully one or two of the books that you're going to need. But also go on eBay. It's cheaper. Sometimes it's not, though. I did find that some of the books on Amazon were much cheaper compared to eBay. But also if you're going if to if a book is way too expensive to buy paperback and you're not going to read it ever again, get it on Kindle because then at least it's way cheaper. And the great thing about using a Kindle is you can actually search up words and they'll come up in all the passages that you need 
So I did find that very useful when it came to using my Kindle. But obviously this is very subjective to the type of degree that you're going to be doing. This is this just worked for my degree because um, we were reading a hell of a lot. Find your study pace. This goes back to the beginning. You know, everyone works at their own pace and you're going to find your way. You're going to find your own way of doing things, just like I did. You don't have to follow the OU's way of doing things, but you know what? Sometimes that is best if you're the type of person that needs a structure, that it's been given a structure. So yeah, that's just like repeated advice. And about the grading, if you would like to find out more information about how they grade, how their grading system works, I'll link that down below if you need any more information. Another bit of advice I would say is make time for yourself. You know, we can't afford to take so much downtime because of the, the time restraints, but I would suggest finding a day, at least maybe one day after you've finished one assignment and you've just sent it in, or a day in between. But take a day to do something for yourself. I think we put way too much stress on ourselves. That's something else I can say. Try not to. You are already going to be stressed enough as it is doing an online degree. Because you're going to have people telling you, Oh, it's not a real degree. And I guess my last bit of advice is, with everything that you do, find the fun in it. Don't don't always stress about, oh, am I going to get this done? How am I going to get this done? I'm just going to finish this off camera and then I'll come back and say my goodbyes. Okay, and my final bit of advice slash um, goodbye to you lovely people is, if you are starting Open University, good luck. You are going to do fabulously. Don't let other people discourage you. You're going to do amazing. Take all the advice that you can from your OU tutor and from other students that are doing that are at OU. It is a journey. Enjoy every second of it. Small achievement because we have to. We have to enjoy every bit of achieve achievement that we have, despite how small it is. Take the achievements where they are because there's going to be stresses, and the more achievements you have, or the more enjoyment that you have, those small successes, it's going to make all of it seem so well worth it. And at the end of it, you will have your ceremony and you will be holding your degree and you will throw your hat up and say you did it and my ceremony will be in november and i'm very excited stay tuned for that video because it's coming it's coming so good luck to you good luck on your journey and to any graduates that have just graduated alongside me or graduated in the previous years but they couldn't do their ceremony congratulations i'm super proud of you and i hope to see you at the ceremony have a lovely day guys i hope you enjoyed the video please don't forget to like and subscribe i finally did the makeup um they're not the colours that I would have liked, but I'm kind of loving this lip though. So yeah, I hope you liked the video. Have a lovely day and I shall see you in the next video. Bye guys!